Hello friends, this video on microbes in human welfare part 2 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now let us talk about the first topic that is microbes and household products. Now as I had mentioned in household products there are quite a few products where microbes play a very important role in their preparation. So one of them is curdling of milk, that means preparation of curd from milk. So curd is always prepared from milk. So in this preparation, microbes play a very important role. Baking. Now there are many items where baking is being done, for example, bread, cake. So when you go to a bakery, you can actually see a variety of cakes with different flavors. So in baking also microbes play an important role. Cheese formation. I'm sure all of you would have uh, eaten cheese sometime or the other. So formation of this cheese, that process also involves an important role of the microbes. So these are some of the things which we will discuss here. Now, not only these, there are many other uh, products where microbes play an important role. However, here we will limit ourselves only to these discussions. So let us start with curd. So let us see which is that specific microbe which plays an important role in curdling of milk. So curd contains a bacteria called lactobacillus. So this is the bacteria which is responsible for curdling of milk. Now how the entire process of curdling takes place we will understand that in the next slide but first let us understand what back which bacteria is present in curd. So in curd you always have lactobacillus. Now what happens now let us understand a little more about lactobacillus. A very common question that might be there in your mind right now is so if if this bacteria is always present in the curd, that means whenever we eat curd, we are actually eating lactobacillus as well. So this bacteria is always going inside our body whenever we eat curd. So is that not harmful if this bacteria gets inside our body? So let's see. So this is a very friendly bacteria. So here we are going to talk about all those bacteria which are going to be friendly and not harmful. So even though lactobacillus gets inside your body, it is not going to cause you any harm. It is an absolutely friendly bacteria. So it, in fact, it is going to help you. It helps to treat and prevent diarrhea. So that means it is going to help you. It will reach inside your body. It will remain within your digestive system. So even though it is present in your intestine, it is not going to cause you any harm. In fact, it is going to protect you from disease like diarrhea. It also helps in food breakdown. Now, the process of digestion, due in the course of that process, what happens, whatever food we eat, the food is broken down in the most simplest form. And then that, in that simplest form, which is mostly glucose, the food is then absorbed into the body. So this bacteria also helps in breaking down food. So in indirectly, it helps in the process of digestion. So that is why you can understand that when you eat curd, you are actually eating bacteria as well. And that bacteria is your friend. It is going to help you in the process of digestion. So even though it is there inside your body, you are safe. In fact, it is going to protect your body from diarrhea. It also helps in absorption of nutrients. So you see there are so many functions or so many different roles which this bacteria perform and they are all in your favor and that is why it is a friendly bacteria. So now the question is how curdling of milk takes place? How milk gets converted into curd? How does that happen? So now we will try to understand how curdling of milk takes place. That is how milk gets converted into curd. Now have you ever tried preparing curd at your home? Now, if not, then the process is very simple. You take milk in a bowl and you put just one spoon of curd into the milk and you leave it un without disturbing overnight. And the next day you see that curd is being formed. So you see, in order to prepare curd, you need to provide a small amount of curd to the milk. So why do you need to provide that small amount of curd? Yes, exactly. because curd contains the microbe lactobacillus and lactobacillus is important for the process of curdling. 
So what happens is a small amount of curd is added to the milk and this small amount of curd which is added to the milk for the formation of new curd, this small amount of curd is often termed as the starter because without this small amount of curd, you cannot prepare milk, uh, curd from milk. So this is needed. So this starts the process of curding and that is why it is called starter. Now what happens? Now let us suppose this is the bowl and in this bowl you have milk. Now you add one spoon curd into this milk and then you leave it overnight. Now what happens in this one teaspoon of curd you have this microbe lactobacillus. So what will lactobacillus do? It will convert the sugar which is present in milk. Now which sugar is present in milk? Yes, it is lactose. So lactose sugar is present in milk. And what is lactose? It is nothing but a disaccharide. So this lactose is present in milk and the lactobacillus microbe will convert the lactose into lactic acid. Now what happens due to the formation of lactic acid? Now how this lactobacillus converts lactose into lactic acid? This happens by the process of fermentation. Now all of you know that every living organism need to undergo the normal metabolic processes for its uh, sustenance and growth. Now there are two types of metabolic process that takes place. There are two types of res uh, respiration that takes place because that is the process by which energy is produced or energy is derived from the food which that organism eats. Now one is aerobic respiration which happens in presence of oxygen. The other one is anaerobic respiration which happens in absence of oxygen which is also termed as fermentation. So here also this lactobacillus undergo the same process and converts lactose into lactic acid. Now this lactic acid, what does it do? This coagulates and partially digests the milk proteins. Now what is the protein which is present in milk? The milk protein is season. So season is the milk protein which is present. Now, due to the formation of this lactic acid, there is a sour test to curd. So, you would have observed that when you, when you try to drink milk, what, what is the taste of milk? It is kind of sweet, but when you eat curd, how is it? It is little sour in test. So, this sour taste is due to the formation of lactic acid. Now, also, what happens? The look wise, if you see milk, milk is a liquid, but if you look at curd, it is not liquid, right? It is, uh, you can say it is partially solid and partially liquid. So it is like uh, the texture is quite little semi liquid. So how does this change in texture happens? That happens because this lactic acid will coagulate the proteins. So the milk proteins which are present and the milk proteins are seasoned. So these are the milk proteins which are present and due to the increase in the acidity because acid increases, lactic acid formation takes place. So there are more acids which are present now. So due to increased acidity, the milk proteins start to coagulate. That is, they start uh, binding with each other and they form... Uh, solid masses and that is how the curd looks like so if you look at curd it looks as if some small bundle of masses have been all put together and that is why the texture of the curd also changes as well as the taste of curd also changes now all this happens due to the conversion of lactose into lactic acid now once curd is formed its nutritional content also changes for example, the content of vitamin B12 in curd is very high when compared to that of milk. And all these changes take place due to coagulation of the milk proteins. Now, this formation or this process of curdling can take place only at a suitable temperature and suitable pH. Now, you would have observed that if the temperature is extremely cold or if the temperature is too hot, in that case also the process of curdling doesn't take place properly because this entire process is dependent on lactobacillus. So, at suitable temperature only, the lactobacillus will grow and multiply. Now, when they grow and multiply, during their growth, they will undergo the metabolic process during which they will convert lactose into lactic acid. And due to the formation of lactic acid, the curd gets all its properties like its sour taste, its uh, 
texture so everything comes due to the formation of lactic acid and lactic acid formation takes place by uh, the lactobacillus microbe only in at a suitable temperature and at a suitable pH so this is how the process of curdling takes place thank you please visit examfear.com for an easy four step learning process absolutely free of cost watch video lessons ask questions refer notes and take an online test thank you once again